Hi, this is your host Swapna Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Avery Panarin, co-founder and CEO of Teleskill Avery. It's great to have you on the show. Hi, it's great to be here. Today there is so much to talk about. You folks closed the Series B funding and of course the work you folks are doing is also very exciting. It's kind of fixing the broken internet. But before we talk about all those things, since you are also a co-founder of the company, I would love to know a bit about the company. What do you folks do? What problem you saw in this space that you wanted to solve, which led to the co-creation of this company? This story is always starts off with what is the meaning of tail scale? Uh, it's sort of a joke. It's uh, the opposite of internet scale. So the kinds of problems we set out to solve are the ones that don't need to scale to a billion users. And I think every development team, even at big companies whose products scale to a billion users, has a bunch of little internal projects that don't need to scale to a billion users. So for example, just your development team being able to SSH into the services running in your production cluster is not a billion user problem. It's a thousand user problem or a hundred user problem or a 10 user problem. So Tailscale specializes in specifically that stuff. And inside that, that range, we started off on the um, connectivity and security uh, problem. So like getting people into your devices and, and dashboards and stuff and keeping people who shouldn't be getting in from getting in. How do you enable these teams to have their own version of kind of a scaled down version of internet? So let's talk about what are you offering? So what Tailscale does, the simplest way to describe it is it's um, it's a tool that connects your devices to your other devices or your services to your other services or your devices to your VMs or your containers. So it's a connectivity tool, uh, but it doesn't matter where physically in the world those things are located. So the simplest way to use Tailscale is you download it uh, from the App Store on your phone and your laptop and you log in as using your Google or your GitHub account and then immediately those two devices are connected to each other. Uh, across space and time. And so if you then run a web service on your laptop, you can reach it from your phone. Uh, and you can just keep adding devices that way. Your coworkers can keep adding devices that way, or you can share devices with people on other networks. Uh, and you don't have to worry about keys and encryption and NATs and firewalls and opening ports and dynamic DNS or any of that stuff. It just sort of magically makes the two things connect. If I'm not wrong, that sounds like a VPN. Is it a VPN? It is a VPN. When we ask our customers, like, how would you describe Tailscale? They're like, look, it's kind of it's kind of a VPN, but it's the ve best VPN you've ever used in your life. It's the sort of VPN that sort of redefines what a VPN is. Uh, so initially, we actually didn't want to call it a VPN because we know VPNs have a lot of negative connotations, but customers describe it back to us as a VPN. It's technically a mesh VPN because there is no center point. All the devices connect directly to each other they don't go through some funnel in the middle. You brought up the term mesh VPN. How different is it from the VPN that we all know and use? Well, there are two different kinds of VPNs. One is for enterprise users and one is more or less that consumers use to get the so-called anonymity. So please talk about the difference between mesh VPN and regular VPN. The most important thing about a mesh VPN is that every node is a peer instead of there being a center point like clients and servers. Uh, so there's no single point of failure in the middle. There's no place where you funnel all the traffic through that can get overloaded. Every time you add a node, the capacity of your VPN increases because the traffic to that node is handled entirely by that node. Um, the hard part about setting up a mesh VPN typically is getting through firewalls and NATs, getting all the keys in place, and then the nodes actually being able to discover each other. So the architecture for Tailscale is what we call hybrid centralized decentralized. The control system, which is as small as possible, the control plane, is what we use for distributing public keys between the nodes and helping the nodes find each other. That's what we run in the cloud. But the actual, what we call the data plane, the place where all the packets go, is completely distributed and decentralized because each of your nodes sends packets directly to each of your other nodes. So it's, it's kind of a neat... You hear a lot about decentralized design. Uh, BitTorrent, for example, is a decentralized design, but it has all these downsides by not having a centralized control plane. Companies would like to have a centralized control plane so they know exactly which nodes are in their network and can kick them out and control them based on people's identity and set ACLs and stuff. But you don't want to have a centralized data plane, which most VPNs do, because then you've got all these huge performance problems. That's great. Now, can you talk about what kind of organizations or companies are leveraging your technologies? 
so Tailscale is, is, is a strangely horizontal product in the sense that it works for individual users at home. We have a free plan. People can play with the Raspberry Pi all the, you know, up to like companies with two or five or a 10 or a hundred or a thousand employees all the way up to companies with 10,000 employees. Uh, and they're not in any particular market. The thing they all have in common is that most of them have dev teams uh, and all of them have IT teams, right? And so Tailscale is, you know, in its simplest definition of a VPN, every company above a certain size has a VPN, uh, has a budget for their VPN, has someone responsible for the VPN and really doesn't like their VPN, right? So it makes it a pretty easy conversation to say like, look, Tailscale, just try it. Now you know how much better it is than your current VPN. Why don't you buy this, right? It's a very simple discussion and it doesn't really matter what market people are in. But we do have companies in the financial world. Our very first customer was a company called VersaBank, which is a bank in Canada. Uh, we specifically designed a bunch of the Tailscale features specifically to work with them. Uh, we started working with an airline early on. Uh, there is a company in Norway that does IoT traffic cameras uh, called Finter. Um, let's see, I'm trying to remember which other logos on our website. There's a bunch of companies, the bigger they are, uh, the less they want to tell anybody which security products they use internally. So we have several pretty big companies who we haven't revealed their names. Uh, the biggest customer so far is an international mining company uh, that, inter that operates in, in um, dozens of countries around the world uh, and needs to have really reliable VPNs, even in situations where the internet itself is really unreliable. When I look at these users, I wonder how you position yourself in this crowded space of VPNs, how you differentiate yourself and not just differentiate, but also kind of uh, educate. And there is awareness about, you know, tele skill within the market so that your target audience knows who to reach out to. What is your strategy? The weirdest thing about the term VPN is there are two completely different kinds of products that people call VPNs. So the original definition of VPN, virtual private network, is what corporations use to be able to connect privately to the company's private network and access the private resources sitting on that network. It had nothing to do with accessing the internet through the VPN. It was everything about accessing your company's network. So that's fundamentally what kind of VPN tail scale is. The other kind of VPN that nowadays most people have heard more about because there's so much advertising is the so-called privacy VPN, which is a very strange term because what a privacy VPN, a consumer-oriented VPN does is it grabs all of your internet traffic, routes it through some other point on the internet, um, and then out from there. And this is to make it so that your local ISP or the cafe you're sitting in or whatever cannot see your traffic. The huge downside of that kind of VPN is that the VPN provider does necessarily see all your traffic. They see your decrypted traffic that goes through their exit node uh, out onto the internet. So we're the first kind. Now, that said, Tailscale has a feature called exit nodes. You can operate your own exit nodes as part of your company if you want and send all of your public facing internet traffic through one of your own exit nodes. Then we don't see your internet traffic, only you see it. Uh, so it's kind of like, it's in some sense the best of both worlds other than you having to operate that exit node yourself. But companies kind of like that. They like the fact that they have this privacy. You often talk about fixing the internet as you believe it's broken. So first of all, explain why you think it's broken and how you're trying to fix it. So I guess one of the things that we we're really aware of starting tail scale because the founders are sort of, you know, a little older. We're not, we're not 20 year olds starting things for the first time. So we were around back in the 1990s when the internet was quite different than it is today. Uh, and one of the dreams of the original internet was this idea of like everything being connected to everything else. Everybody's an equal, there's peer to peer, everybody has an IP address. You can connect to the IP address that's running a service and you know, there's no, you don't have to pay anybody rent. You don't have to ask anybody permission to publish something. Uh, the internet since then has gotten increasingly centralized. At this point, virtually everything you do on the internet ends up going through one of maybe three companies that somebody is paying rent to in order to provide this service. So it's, it's you know, and part of this has happened in many, in many ways because of the limitations of the technical infrastructure of the internet. We ran out of IP addresses. IPv6 never got fully deployed. Firewalls and NATs have to be there for security reasons, but because of that, I can't make a peer-to-peer -peer connection. 
right? So what Tailscale is doing is it's creating this overlay network on top. It's going back to the original concept of the internet, which is called that because it's a network of networks, right? You create a private network that's yours and you connect it to other people's private networks in a controlled way, not in an uncontrolled way, right? And you don't have to care about physical location. Um, and Tailscale just sort of, when you use it, when you try Tailscale, it has this feeling of being like the way the internet was supposed to be back in the 1990s, but with this sort of modern slant to it where we actually do encryption, we actually have access controls, we actually tie things to your identity. Uh, and so people accessing your services, you, know, you can control exactly who those people are allowed to be. We are seeing a lot of adoption of 5G private networks. And I want to understand what role can tail skill play within private 5G network space? 5G is, is, it, um, is great technology. It basically is, is at a most fundamental level, 5G is a performance improvement over traditional LTE, right? And in general, on traditional LTE networks, every device is isolated from every other device because the purpose of an LTE connected device is usually to connect to a server that is probably running in the cloud somewhere. Uh, when you add tail scale to that, it makes it possible for LTE or 5G connected devices to actually talk to other LTE or 5G connected devices. So you're forming this private overlay network um, from a network that generally doesn't let the devices talk to each other at all, right? So you get this really nice behavior where you can now deploy, say, 100 different IoT devices all on the same 5G network that normally wouldn't be able to talk to each other except through the cloud. Now they can bypass the cloud and all the costs and overhead associated with that and just form a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection. So Tailscale, Tailscale handles all the problems of, of associating those devices to each other so you can just do things in the easy way simple way. Let's also quickly talk about security as that's one of the core components of VPN. And we are already seeing a lot of movement in that direction. We see a shift left movement. Uh, we talk about zero trust network and so on. So talk about security in context of TLS scale. Sure. Uh, first of all, I think zero trust is such a funny term because everybody knows they want it, but nobody knows what it is. Uh, and, you know, it would be, you know, pretty presumptuous of me to tell you what it is. I can tell you what I think it is. Uh, I think zero trust, the purpose of zero trust is uh, to eliminate the, the so-called like encryption added and removed here problem. Uh, a zero trust network is not really zero trust. It's just zero trust of the physical network by default. The only devices I'm willing to talk to are ones that I do trust, right? How do you establish that trust is an interesting problem. Tailscale has an approach to how I establish trust between devices that I think is really innovative and, and, and makes things easier. But there's many different ways to establish that trust. And every company that has a different way of establishing trust or distributing encryption keys describes themselves as a zero trust product. Um, one of the things that I think Tailscale does really well that is rare even among zero trust companies is it it's so easy to use that most people who adopt Tailscale adopt it because it makes their life easier. Right. It's like I needed to connect these different devices to each other. When I use Tailscale, it's trivially easy to connect these devices together. But the nice thing is that along with that feature rides this zero trust security. So when I connect devices to each other using Tailscale, I don't trust the physical network. I do have an identity associated with them. And so it actually solves all these security problems by default. And so security or Tailscale has this really nice secure by default but easier than what you were doing before, which makes security teams really happy because usually they're fighting with say the IT team or the dev team to please, please stop deploying this, this terrible idea because it's a security hole and we really need to slow you down, but it's for your own good, right? With Tailscale, we don't need to slow you down because it's really exciting that Tailscale is doing all this stuff that I've been trying to convince you to do for years, but also making your life easier. So there's no fight. Now let's talk about the big news, which is Siri has been funding of 100 millions. Uh, congratulations. Talk a bit about who are your investors. The round is led by uh, CRV and Insight Partners, uh, but it also has participation from all of our previous investors who are eager to put in more money. Uh, and that includes Excel, uh, Heavybit, and Uncore Capital, as well as uh, a bunch of angel investors and smaller checks. Uh, and it's it's a bit it's unusually large for a Series B, but I think it sort of reflects how excited everybody is about the potential of Tailscale, not just to do the things that it's doing right now, but it's sort of 
create a platform for everybody to solve a bunch of problems that they haven't been able to solve for the last 20 years. What kind of adoption you have seen of daily scale over the years and what is driving this adoption? Well, the adoption is, is way faster than I expected it to be when I started the company. Um, it's at the moment we're growing at about 20% per month in active nodes uh, and the revenues are growing. Um, I think they, they more than doubled in the last six months and we're on track to do that again. Um, the, the kinds of people who use TailScale are all the way across the board. So individuals use it for things like running their Raspberry Pi at home or connecting to a Minecraft server or controlling the 3D printer. Um, then people use it at work to like SSH into their production systems or the development clusters or connect databases to uh, dashboards when they're in two different locations, for example. Um, and then, you know, the next step up from that is the IT team uh, rolling out across the entire company to replace whatever they're currently doing with their existing VPN. So you end up with these like really interesting, completely distinct use cases. Uh, but all of our growth comes from that very first use case of people playing with it at home, getting super excited about how this like, this changes everything. I can't believe I can do all this stuff I couldn't do before. Telling their friends, some of those friends end up bringing it to work and that's where we make money. It's, a, it's sort of fascinating to me. Um, that the free plan is used completely differently from our paid plans, but is the fundamental vehicle for growth across the whole company. Looking at this uh, new round of funding, what is your plan with this funding? What are the areas that you're going to focus on with this round? Um, I think a little bit unusually for a company raising this much money, we're not going to immediately start dumping it all into uh, marketing and sales. Uh, we did make a, uh, a joke at one point. It's like, you know, we, we calculated we could we could actually reserve seven minutes of Super Bowl time uh, with $100 million, uh, which would really annoy everybody watching the Super Bowl. Uh, but it's sort of it's, it's amazing to try to put this much the scale of this much money in perspective. But the, the truth is TailScale is already working really well. And the thing that works really well for us is having extremely high quality goals and building the product that people actually want and getting out of their way. Right, so we're going to keep on investing in that and keep on in solving adjacent problems to the core one that we started with. And we believe the growth is sort of going to follow naturally from that. And so of course we're gonna hire a few more salespeople and a bit more on marketing, but the core of the product is not gonna change. And the, the free nature of the free plan is going to stay the free plan. And it's all about like, we have really lofty goals, like the internet is broken. If you're going to fix the internet, it needs to be for everybody in the world. How do you get a product like this to be helping everybody in the world? Any closing thoughts before we wrap up this interview? The funniest thing about TailScale is that people don't, you can tell them what it does and they don't get it. They don't believe you. They, we often get feedback that their friends have been telling them to try TailScale for weeks or months and they never got around to it. And then they finally tried it. And it's like, whoa, this was, first of all, way easier to get started than I thought it was. And secondly, way more useful than I thought it would be. Uh, and so my best advice is like, don't listen to anything I've said, just go into the app store, download TailScale, test it out. And in five minutes, if you don't believe that it's good, then uh, you can give up because almost everybody who just finally pushes that button to try it out immediately understands. Every thank you so much for joining me today and talk about TailScale. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you very much. And of course, we're always happy to uh, come back whenever you need us.